Hello, it's Clint again. And who wants to jump down the rabbit hole of intersectional feminism? So this is an interesting topic to me because it used to be, it, not so long ago, it was very common knowledge that there are differences between men and women. And for some reason, now men and women are exactly the same and therefore everything should just reflect that. So before you uh, decide to gouge your eyes out, just stick with me through this. Uh, I promise there will be a point. So we're going to start here with San Diego Comic-Con. This is a panel on intersectional feminism in comics. I know. Let's watch a, just a little bit here. Hey, I'm curious. I think let's start down at the other end this time with Rosie. But I would love it if you guys could share with us one character that had a really big impact on your life growing up. Somebody who you felt represented you when maybe there wasn't a lot of representation of that type elsewhere in comics or mainstream media okay first off just with that question uh, representation or relating to a character there's so much more to do with a character than what they look like now, i don't have a problem with diversity in comics if you have a comic and it makes sense to have you know a female character a disabled character a uh, black white asian whatever character I, I honestly don't have a problem with that what i have a problem with is thinking that because there are white characters that that is bad and there's some sort of ratio that you have to create that makes the world a better place uh that is nonsensical if you want to write a comic book that has any kind of lead character do that but first to understand intersectional feminism let's look at a definition and i um, don't get your hopes up too high you're not really going to understand much more but uh, basically, it's all the parts of everything stuck together. And I highlighted this quote that is supposed to be a definition. It says, The complex, cumulative manner in which the efforts of different forms of discrimination combine, overlap, or intersect. If that's not a nonsensical sentence, then I don't know what is. To break that down, it essentially means that discrimination doesn't exist in a bubble. Different kinds of prejudice can be amplified in different ways when put together it's a critical concept but one that some people find confusing i wonder why they find it confusing because this is nonsensical um, it's basically measuring all these pieces as though they're quantifiable and that they add up and this is why we have the oppression olympics and so somehow a character is more interesting the more you know these intersections collide in reality, that does not make an interesting character. If you can write an entire cast of characters that all look and think and well, not think, but all look and, you know, appear the same, and you can write each of those characters so that they are individual and they all have their own struggles and trials and, uh, you know, nuance, then you are a good writer. The more you add these little differences, these outward differences, that might make for some interesting obstacles for that character to overcome but ultimately you've got to write the character so adding these extra things doesn't make a better character it just you know you're it just makes lazy writing you're just relying on these supposed intersections to do the work for you and before we move on to the next section i just wanted to show you why it matters to our work and i always hear this word all the time work as though like there's diversity work or there's feminist work. And then when you talk to people about, hey, why are comics changing so much? Why why is there this ideology trying to be pushed on me? And they pretend like nothing's happening. It's because that's what they're working toward. That's what they mean when they say our work. They're trying to incorporate their ideology everywhere. So we'll leave it to the, the white man to sort of undermine the question here. Let's see his answer. I, I think there's a lot of me probably <laughs> represented already, but I think probably uh, R2-D2. Um, <laughs> first movie I ever saw was uh, in the theater was Star Wars. And okay, so he picks a character that it's not even human. And without intentionally making this point, at least I don't think he was intentionally making this point, he made the point that there's so many characters out there that have no race that have no ethnicity they have no like their life experience is so individual that literally anybody could relate to them um there there are a lot of characters like that especially in comics 
And you're talking about aliens, you're talking about superheroes, and in fact, there are men and women and of all different races and ethnicities. A character does not have to look like you in order to be an interesting character. If you want to write a character that looks like you, I'll say it again, then then go for it. Just make it a well-written character. That's all we really care about. Here's another little gem. This question is for anybody who wants to jump on it first, but I'm curious about when you first started identifying as an intersectional feminist and you know what do you think some of the more harmful misinformation about feminism is and and how we can overcome it it's kind of a two-part question but i'm i think they kind of go hand in hand the f the, the harmful harmful excuse me misinformation that comes about feminism i wonder where that comes from I realized I was an intersectional feminist when I read the definition of feminist. Um, that's <laughs> it's, it's funny because I literally just read the definition of intersectional feminist and uh, it uh, made no sense whatsoever. So the definition of feminism, which they'll tell you it just means that you believe in the equality of men and women, everybody I mean, I don't know anybody that doesn't believe men and women should be equal. Feminism certainly means something else. And intersectional feminism means something even further beyond that. We're talking about the intersections of identities. So, uh, you know, it's the, this is the oppression Olympics embodied. I mean, it is what it is, you know. Um, and, and, you know, being black, it, like, it it kind of just comes with it, <laughs> you know? I don't have to force it. <laughs> um, and uh, I think some of the harmful stereotypes of, you know, feminists that sh can and should be overcome is that, you know, it's that feminism is like a, a white people thing. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that that was a stereotype. Maybe it is. Feminism is a white people thing. In fact, I think that the whole social justice a uh, far left progression thing is primarily a white upper class thing or upper middle class. Yeah. It, I don't think it represents uh, the kinds of groups that they think or hope that it represents. Because um, white people tend to uh, be very aggressive about stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. So, she, she just talked about the stereotypes that are, are given toward feminism. And then she just stated a stereotype about white feminists. And I, am I the only one that finds this really funny? I... <laughs> to the point where it's no longer cool. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and every white woman on the panel just has to laugh about it because in this intersectionality competition they're farther down the totem pole so yeah you've got to nod and, and disagree because because if you don't have more of these little arrows pointing to you you have less to say you just need to sit and agree like uh and i think in order to overcome that you need to normalize being a feminist as being an intersectional feminist mm -hmm. you know Okay, so this is something I've noticed a lot, and that is normalizing extreme ideologies. And these uh, really far left progressives have actually been very successful at doing this. That's why, you know, I re reading comic book books one day, and I and I and I run across um, stories that are trying to make me feel bad, or uh, you know, make uh, activate white guilt. There's a, all of a sudden it's everywhere and all of the pros and comics think it's normal. Um, on Twitter, everybody acts like it is normal. Not everybody, but, uh, people on their anti comic skate or really far left, they pretend that it's normal. That is a strategic tactic. It's not something that, um, just sort of happened. It's, it's happened on purpose. I mean, she just stated that, right? It's this, uh, Christina, I can't really read her name very well. Um, if someone says, oh, you're a feminist, so, you know, you're excited about being able to vote, I'm like, Sh sure, but <laughs> I'm, what I'm really excited about is making sure the women that marched in the back when we were trying to learn to vote, uh, get to vote 
is in the front with us, you know? Um, so I think you have to be cognizant uh, and deliberate with your feminism to make sure that you're including everyone, especially if um, you aren't a person of color, or you're not you know, neurotypical or something like that. Just making sure to look outside of yourself and be like, okay, let me calm down for a second. Like, pussy has her tight, but also, <laughs> What about my, my black friend over here? Is she getting any kind of uh, mm -hmm. attention as well? You know, so that's what I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, so everybody again, you have to you have to fall in line uh, because your opinion is less. And honestly, I don't really care who in this pecking order is right or what fillings they have. They've all made this bed together. So um, yeah, I'm happy to let them lie in it. All right, TED Talk, this is, again, none of this stuff's new. I just wanted to package it differently and, and hopefully put a different perspective on things. But here's more uh, comics and intersectionality. I love comic books. Now, comic books are more than just books. They're portals to these vivid and action-packed worlds filled with crime-fighting heroes, people we've all looked up to in some point of our lives. Now, I've only been a fan of comics for a couple of years, and I still have a lot to learn. However, the quickest thing I picked up on as a female comic book reader is that this is still very much considered a man's thing. And I have to admit, I was pretty intimidated. It was clear that these comics were created for the stereotypical straight white male audience in mind. Superman and Batman are buff and masculine, establishing their dominance and enforcing gender roles, while heroines like Wonder Woman are seen more as eye candy than superheroes, saving the world half naked with hardly any armor to protect them. But most of all... Okay, just want to interrupt here for a minute. And that is because I agree that comic books were made for men. That's just the truth. And I'm going to prove why. I don't agree that they were made for straight white men. Yeah, you have more straight white men reading books, and that's, I mean, the masses. So it makes sense that, that's, that you're going to see more of that. Um, but I know a lot of people that are not white that read comic books. However, I don't know a lot of women that read comic books. I'm not saying that there aren't women that read comic books. There are. I'm saying they are a small minority of comic book readers. And it's not because of representation. It is not. This used to be common knowledge. But feminism has pushed this narrative that men and women are exactly the same and therefore media should reflect that media should be exactly the same that's not the truth uh if we look turn back the clock just a little bit uh, when was this written uh, 2016 it wasn't even that long ago the farther you go back you there's actual references to boys and reading now we're not talking about comics anymore we're talking about novels prose fiction Boys don't read the same way that girls read. Boys don't read as much as girls read in general. Some boys do. I'm not saying that there's men read all one way and women read all another way. Generally speaking, men and women are different. Boys and girls are different. I know that's uh, earth shattering, but it's the truth. Boys skip pages. They read very sporadically. This is well documented. It's in a lot of books. Um, if you're looking at young adult fiction, there's not a lot of fiction written for boys. It's written from the girl's perspective. And that's because more girls read those kind of books. Uh, more girls read novels than boys do. What is it with boys and reading? Why boys often struggle with reading and what we can do about it? Uh, boys do struggle with reading. There's, there's a lot of information here. Let's see. On Scholastic's 2016 survey of over 2,000 U.S. children ages 6 through 17, only 52% of boys versus 72% of girls said they liked reading books over the summer, while only 27% of boys versus 37% of girls said they read books for fun at least five days a week. 45% of boys versus only 36% of girls said they often have trouble finding books they like. Anecdotal evidence. I know growing up, I struggled with reading. I, I know I did. I, I definitely relate to this finding, having a hard time finding books that you liked. There's lots of books that girls like. 
Now, I'm not saying that the the book industries need to change and create more stuff for boys, targeted toward boys. I'm saying that because boys' preferences and girls' preferences are different, the market reacts to that. And therefore, comic books are much more appealing to boys, and therefore, they're going to reflect things that interest boys more, and uh, standard novels appeal more to girls, and therefore they're going to reflect things that girls like. There are differences between men and women, and that is okay. It, I'm just recognizing the truth here. Somehow, the world has forgotten this. And if you still don't believe me, even for adults, um, let's see here, in a world where women read more than men, it pays to write from their perspective. And this is true. There's so many books that are written from a female perspective, and I'm not saying that these books... Or, or no good, or you can't couldn't read them and enjoy them. In fact, I'll uh, you know I read novels, and uh, you know I read The Hunger Games. I enjoyed, well, let's see, the first one and a half books. But there being a female lead, that didn't necessarily bother me. It bothered me how the character was written, especially how she devolved. But it had it has much less to do with what that character looks like than the story and how interesting that story is. Another one I'm thinking of that I've read somewhat recently was the book thief. The book thief, that was written from a female perspective. To me, you know, World War II was interesting to me, but it was definitely written from a female perspective, and that's because the market is selecting those things. Again, I'm not saying that there are no novels written for men or from a man, man's perspective. I'm saying that the majority are written for women. And books that are specifically written for women, look at Twilight, look at uh, know, Fifty Shades of Grey, look at, I mean, there, there's endless books that are written for women. That's great. That is okay. I have no problem with that. However, I personally would much rather read a good comic book than read a novel. And it doesn't have anything to do with representation. It has more to do with how my brain works. Uh, you may be an outlier. And that's cool. But I just wanted to point out that there's a difference. And there are reasons for all of these differences. The answer to it is not changing representation in those mediums. It's just recognizing that they're different. If you want to write a, a comic for girls, go for it. But don't shame those of us who have enjoyed comic books as a place where we can get some entertainment and read and enjoy stories the way that we like to do. That's how our brains work. So thank you for listening. I hope uh, you gained something from that. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this whole divide. And the best way that you can support the channel is really by subscribing or sharing. Um, I want to build this channel up more um, because I honestly, I want to focus more on comics. Uh, but yeah, I could, I could definitely use your help getting the word out. So I will see you tomorrow.